The privilege to serve as interim dean has afforded me a glimpse into the inner workings of all the ministries that you saw so beautifully represented. And nearly every week, I have listened to someone describe a life-changing moment of grace that happened here, in this place, or on the cathedral close. And I've watched, I've watched firsthand the stonemasons and the construction workers who dedicate themselves to the sacred task of restoring this cathedral. I, I hear the musicians rehearse and then offer their gift. I, I get to watch the children, the children delight in being here, both from our cathedral schools and from schools all across the nation. But for the children raised here, as one of the fathers said to me when Beauvoir had its closing prayer service this week, the children raised here get to grow up in this place as part of their home as part of their spiritual foundation. Priceless blessing. And we, among the clergy, will tell you what an awe-inspiring journey it is to climb those steps into the pulpit where so many luminaries have spoken. And when I was um, unexpectedly and briefly hospitalized during Holy Week, and at home recuperating on Easter Sunday morning, I was among the thousands around the country and the world who watched this glorious worship online. And if you have any doubt about what a gift that is, let me read you a letter that I received just this week from a man. Dear Bishop Buddy, my name is Greg Thacker. My home parish is St. David of Wales in Denton, Texas. And a couple years ago, I had a triple bypass, and that put an end to my driving. And so I had to rely on my son and daughter-in-law for transportation, and that ended up putting a strain on all of them. So I'm homebound now. And in the past few weeks, I have discovered the National Cathedral Sunday morning worship service, and I really enjoy it. It makes me feel as if I am worshiping with all of you. And I feel compelled to write you and convey that was on my heart. And believe me when I say, if I lived in the area, I would transfer my membership to the cathedral. <laughs> and in this interim period, we have been um, setting our sights on strengthening everything that is best in this cathedral. We've been clearing out as many closets as we can and setting as positive and joyful and prayerful a tone to begin a new season of ministry as, I, as we welcome Dean Hollerith. And we are so excited for the future, both the immediate and the long term. We have made significant investments in the, in the ballast of our life, which is our worship life and our music, in addition to expanding all the ministries that are under the watch of Canon Michael McCarthy in music, we have welcomed Rose Duncan, the Reverend Rose Duncan, as the Canon for Worship. And in August, we, re we will welcome the Reverend Andy Barnett, a gifted musician priest who will help us add breadth and diversity to our worship life. And as you saw so well, so well represented, we are deepening our commitments in core ministry priorities, honoring and serving our nation's veterans, committing ourselves to the long-term work of racial reconciliation, strengthening interfaith relationships, exploring the role of faith in public life. Let me say a word, a word more about the power of our online and social media presence using this past weekend as an example. Um, and as it turned out, because of our commitment to have one Sunday a month dedicated to civic and public um, causes, we had as our guest preacher on Sunday a man who is known for his ministry and service among the gay and lesbian community in honor of gay pride. That had been scheduled months before. But when the word of the tragedy in Orlando occurred, all of the resources of the cathedral came to bear in a moment 
to respond as best we could. And the communications team and I drafted social media messages that went viral around the country and the city, letting people know that this was a place of welcome and prayer and solace, both in Evensong that afternoon and as we rang, told the bells later in the day. And so we were able to be present in this city, in a grieving nation, and known around the country as one who stands in solidarity with those who mourn in times of great crisis and in deep pain. And we could do that because the resources were ready, the people were at the ready, and we could respond. You saw on the screen our commitment to the Cathedral Scholars Program, transforming lives, providing Richmond opportunities for 45 gifted high school students from Washington, D.C.'s public schools. And the fruits of that are a 100% college acceptance rate and generous scholarships to the finest university and colleges around the nation. We are renewing and strengthening our ties to our beloved schools on the close, we are committing ourselves to the stewardship of this building. And I don't know where you were on the day that the earthquake struck. I was on my way to Central America, which is a land of earthquakes. And I spent three weeks as this nation was reeling or this cathedral was reeling to recover. I spent three weeks in a land where cathedrals lay in ruins because of earthquakes. And I came back and I thought, oh my God. Thank God we didn't lose this. Thank God it's here for us. And yes, Lord, we commit to preserving this space for the holiness it provides. And now, now along with all of you, I am so grateful to be among those to welcome our new Dean, Randy Hollerith, as he assumes his ministry. He was called after a long and discerning process on both sides. Um, he comes with a commitment to Christ, as you heard, a passion for building vibrant institutions, commitment to strong team building, collaborative ministry and witness to Christ. He brings and shares our commitment to community engagement, civic discourse, social justice. He has a pastor's heart and how we need that, how we all need that. Hearts centered on being faithful to Christ and Christ's work in the world. We often speak of this being our cathedral. It's my cathedral, it's your cathedral. And we know that it's not our cathedral, right? We know it belongs to God, it belongs to the ages, it belongs to all people. But in this moment, in this time, we are its stewards. And we are the ones privileged every day to almost take for granted the grandeur of this place, as if it will always be here, as Judy said, when we open our windows in the morning. But to whom much is given, friends, much is expected. And I thank God to be among you, among those of you and countless others who hold this place and its ministry as one of the gifts of our life and the responsibilities to God and to one another that we share and that we will pass on when our time comes to all those who come after us. God bless you. Thank you again for being here. And, and uh, may we all give thanks to God for the privilege of being in this moment in time in the life of Washington National Cathedral. Thank you. <laughs>